plan of action for today? Loads. Uh, busy weekend this weekend, but we're starting with a whole new raised bed at the very back of the garden. So the bed at the back actually is awesome and doesn't technically need replaced. It's in really good nick. But we've decided we're going to move our prunus cherry trees and we're going to put them in that bed. So we need to make it a wee bit wider and a bit deeper for them as well. And we'll do our best to chat to you guys as we go. But two problems. One, there's work needs done and stopping to film and stuff can be a bit of a pain. Um, and also, we haven't used the shotgun mic so the sound won't be as good as normal. But we'll do our best. So it's this bed that's getting done then and first job we need to do is take as many of the plants out as we can, take all the soil out so I can check things and I'm going to refresh the soil with loads of my lovely homemade compost. Kate will build the actual bed, put it together and put it back in. Should all be very simple, we've done this so many times now. We're going to use a double height of sleeper so we've got two full length ones for the front and then I'll cut two to the size to make it a three foot length using the nice cut edges as the outsides and then I'll drive pegs into the corner in the middle to stop the whole thing from moving forward and back and to keep the two sections together. Any recommendations for cutting railway sleepers? Um, don't do it by hand because then you will be able to make a fist for about a week. <laughs> I've got a circular saw. Unfortunately the blade on it isn't quite long enough to go all the way through but we find from doing the raised beds the beds are beginning that you can get a nice clean cut halfway through, flip it over, cut it back again the other way and it's nice and tidy. Given it's going to be so deep do we need to do anything to stop them slipping about or moving? The pegs that I'm going to drive into the corners, I'll screw the sleepers to that and that will keep them on top of each other and keep it square because otherwise it might over time start to twist and it will look untidy because the weight of the soil or any roots or if the soil gets waterlogged it will start to push and it will... You say you're just going, going to screw it together like it's nothing. I take it you've got some serious screws. Yes, I've got super long, I think they're called carriage bolts. They're about that length, so they will punch right through the sleeper and a good depth into the side pieces and that keep those good. That's what we used on these beds. They're super sharp, they drive in really nicely, so it's not, you don't have to pre-drill or anything, you just punch them straight through. They're fab. Well, I will leave you to it. May the force be with you. While I'm at it, remember, hit the like button subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notified every time I post a video because you know you don't want to miss any tarpaulin's down because we're going to empty the soil from this or most of it. If we put it in the tarpaulin we won't lose most of it in the lawn. And of course a total chance for me to show off you two holster because we have a lot of nettles. Just because Kate's in that end and you won't have heard that, it's not us that have a lot of nettles. We come through the fence from the park and settle in the bed. Kate would like to make that clear. I'm just going to mention this because I know if I don't, somebody will comment. Remember, we don't show everything in the videos because we have to fit them in a really short period of time. But yes, we have a tree and we have two clematis. For both of them, I'm trying not to disturb the roots, so I am aware of that. Don't worry, this is all part of the plan. Oh, those were really difficult to get out. Oh, okay, next.
Now, did you measure twice? No. Look how beautifully this was cut. So it really is as simple. I just bolt the two pieces together in the right angle. Obviously you want to make sure it's level and it's square. But that's that simple. And then shows your bolts. Huge big massive carriage bolts. Did we not tell you it was way easier than you thought? Actually not bad. Just to show you, so Kate was saying about how she fixes these two levels together. She's using these corner posts, which both levels are screwed into this and this is hammered into the ground. <sighs> Raised beds are actually way simpler than people think. People overcomplicate it. It's just, we're just making a big rectangle of wood, that's all. Right, I need to get this filled now. I've now got four sacks of homemade compost to go in and fill it. This one was too heavy for me to lift. Kate's the one with the muscles. Good thing to mention because it comes up a lot in our Facebook community and forums that works. Sorry, Doc. Rudely interrupted because the neighbours just gave us some box hedge cuttings. Oh yeah, as I was saying, right. This comes up all the time, so I'm just going to raise it. And um, we do not line our raised beds. Loads of folk do, and it's a great thing to do because it protects the wood and stops the wood from rotting. And we don't line our beds because we want everything to be in contact with the garden and the garden soil. We want the the organisms, the life that's in the soil, we want that through our bed. So we actually build our bed straight onto the ground. Right, okay, I'm just putting off because this is really heavy. telling you there is nothing like homemade compost. Yes. We're not even finished yet. here has been completely replaced and um, it's now twice as big. We've replaced it up with a raised sleeper bed so it matches the rest of the garden but it meant we could move our trees because we had these uh, primus in pots and they weren't really doing that great. We struggled with trees in this garden as you guys know so we've now given them loads of space. They're all planted in um, and their little lacer as well. Um, it's a bit bare just now but that's the joy of all the stuff coming on in the greenhouse. We will fill this with colour soon. Uh, was it... What was the volume of soil again? 883 litres. 
883 litres of soil I've shoveled today. So just about emptied the hot bin and all the sacks of compost I've been collecting you saw because um, it's not been a great year for having trips to the garden centre and stuff. So yeah, need to paint it. And then these are getting moved to a bed up at the house. Oh man, there's going to be gin tonight. So, a whole different day and it's future Eli jumping back into the video for you guys. Um, as you can see then, uh, the bed is done, uh, filled with soil, it's all painted, all the planting up happened. Um, I didn't record the planting up um, or the painting because, well, to be perfectly honest, because we just were so exhausted we started getting clumsy and forgetting things. So sorry you missed out on that fun, but basically um, it is done, it is here. So as you can see it's quite a big beastie, it's twice the size or twice the depth of the bed that was here originally, um, which is not normal for a flower bed, that's a bit weird. Um, we have done that deliberately because we wanted to move the trees into this bed. But anyway, so as I was saying, the bed is now twice the height it was, so we already had one height's worth of soil mix in here that I'd been working on over the years. Um, and we had to make another batch out of all the compost I had been saving over the last year and what was in the hot bin. Luckily, it was time to get that emptied. So in total, I shoveled 883 litres of compost mix, as I mentioned before, but I actually did it three times, I think, because I started filling the bed and then realised that I had to move the acer, so I had to unfill it and then move everything and then fill it again. And, um, so yeah, I was a bit of a state that night. <laughs> but just out of interest for you guys though, because I know a few of you guys are talking about raised beds and you may be wondering about, you know, what do you fill them with? Is it expensive? How deep do they need to be? So I already have a video on that and I'll, I'll put it here at the end for you. But very quickly then, Raised beds are very expensive to fill, I'm not going to lie to you, it's a, that's an awful lot of um, compost and soil mix to put in there. So if you don't need the depth for planting like we do, we need the depth because it's trees. If this was just for flowers, you wouldn't need the depth. So what you could do is you could actually partially fill the bed, like maybe half, three quarters fill it, with things like... Um, bits of old tree branches, you know, some rocks, that kind of thing, uh, cardboard, lots of organic things that will eventually break down, just to fill it up so you're adding less soil the first time you fill it, okay? So that's something you can do. Um, so think about your beds. Before you make them, do you need them to be that height? Um, if, like us, our beds are higher because we're starting to struggle with our joints and our backs, so they're higher to make it easier. But if you don't need that depth for planting, then you don't need to fill it with soil on the first go. Um, you will be refreshing the soil over the years, but on that first go. If, like us, you do need it for planting, then you will need to make sure you've got the full depth worth of material in there. But if you just go and buy these mixes from your garden centre, it's going to be incredibly expensive. You guys know my opinion on that as it stands. I don't buy them anyway because I think they're overpriced for what they are and you're much better to make your mixes at home. It's much cheaper and you can make them suit. But for a standard raised bed for the first year, I use a ratio of about 60% cheap topsoil and about 30% of my homemade compost or compost. And that last 10% is usually the inorganic material for drainage. So things like if you're using perlite or grit or that kind of stuff. Um, you will have to top it up with compost every year. I talk about refreshing the soil in the beds and amending the soil, um, because obviously that organic matter gets broken down and used up and you have to replace it every year. And you will notice that the level in your beds drops over the year as that happens. So you'll be refreshing that organic matter every year and you'll keep enriching your bed. So about 60, 30, 10 is roughly my ratio that I use. Um, yeah, so I hope that's helpful. So planting-wise in this bed then, we're going to go with lots of kind of yellows and rich colours this year to contrast against the kind of orangey red of the fence. Um, but just before we head off, 
as promised, two videos for you for this week then that I want you to go away and watch as part of your homework on raised beds. The first one is our actual things to think about before you build your raised beds. All the stuff like location and all that kind of stuff. The second video, I want you to go and watch me talk about amending the soil in my raised beds. Both really useful things. See you guys. <laughs>